we are again. Cheers to all of you. It's the end of the day. It's uh, still cold Thursday. We're almost there. We're almost out of it. A lot of snow. So, you seen a video of a 92 Buick Roadmaster firing up, buried in the snow, and uh, past little while you've, you know, during the summer you may have seen it sitting here or there in the driveway, maybe caught a glimpse of it in some of the videos. And uh, some people asked, you know, what's going on with that Roadmaster? Well, time got away from me, and um, I was looking to make an introduction video to it and everything and explaining the whole story behind it. But winter came, and it got parked. Um, and uh, that's where we're at. Now it's buried in snow. But... Uh, you seen a little clip there at the beginning, uh, hooked it up to the hooked it up to the trailer um, for the hell of it. A little couple clips there. But um, so here we are, I'm gonna explain how I got that uh, Roadmaster wagon. And uh, is actually a very interesting story behind it so hopefully you stick with me and uh, hear me out on the story and it, hopefully it's interesting to you but um, it all starts 11 years ago yep 11 years ago uh, I was all in junk cars with my 95 gold Suburban, three quarter ton. And uh, I got a call and the lady wanted me to remove a junk car. And she said, it's an old Buick station wagon. Now, I always wanted a uh, 94 through 96 specifically Roadmaster wagon with the wood grain because those years came with the LT1, the posi rear end, the dual exhaust, and all the options. I always really wanted one of those cars, um, but I never was able to get one. And uh, I did have a 95 Caprice wagon that looked kind of like an Impala SS, if you remember that. Uh, search for that back in my videos you'll see that um, but that had the LT1 but it was a tired old car I got in a trade um, I beat it around a little bit let somebody use it they wrecked it went to the junkyard that was it but um, close to what I always wanted anyway so anyway back to it 11 years ago here I am picking up cars, a lady calls, she said she's got 94, she said, Buick Roadmaster wagon. Now, my eyes light up, right? I want that. Uh, it was, it was a good ways away from me. Um, it was over an hour, maybe even an hour and a half, I'm not sure. But uh, it was a good ride, more, you know, longer than I'd go for, some, for a junk car. But she said it had some problems, you know, it had a power steering leak, uh, you know, needed a battery, you know, general stuff. But um, the neighborhood where she was, was that's uh, the guy next door with his little machine decided to finally plow his whole yard. But anyway, um, so... Yeah, so that she says the thing's sitting there in her driveway. She just wants to get rid of it. 
how much would I pay for it? And, you know, I'll pay, you know, whatever it is. Not enough, lady, you know, like, I want, I want a Roadmaster, you know. So, I think I told her three or four hundred dollars or something like that I would pay. But, obviously I want to look at it first. She said, okay. I said, you got a title, yeah, I've got a title and all that. So I said, all right, on my way. So next morning I journeyed off and uh, took a nice cruise down there. When I pull down the road, what's the first thing I see? Because, you know, I'm a car guy, you know. What, what do car guys look at? They look at exhaust pipes, right? They look at stuff like that. Well, the car's pulled in forward and I see the back of the car and all I can see is one single tailpipe sticking out the side. What does that tell me? This is not a 94. It doesn't have the LT1 because all the LT1s had the dual exhaust coming out both sides. So I start to get disappointed. I get out. Her son's out there and uh, he's cleaning some stuff out of it and I walk up and I just, you know first thing I do is whip the door open and look at the the door jam and sure enough it's a 93 one year shy so it's got the 305 TBI even worse single exhaust It's not not very pretty. It's got some, you know, some blemishes here, some dents here. It's got some rot. Um, interior is not the greatest. I don't even want this car now. I'm so mad. I'm so disappointed. I don't even want it. So I said to the kid, I'm like, you know, you told, you know, you guys tell me 94 on the phone. Well, yeah, I guess it's a 93, but, you know, what's the difference? I said, it's a big difference, but them, they're just normal people that just had a station wagon. They don't know things about, you know, different years and models and LT1s. and they, they don't know anything about that stuff. So I said, well, I'm very disappointed. I said, you told me the wrong here. That's why I came all the way out here to get it. And he said, well, you're not going to take the car. And I said, I really, <laughs> I really don't even really want it. But, you know, um, they turned the key in the thing and it started up and sounded pretty damn good. Sat there and idled, very quiet. So I was starting to get sold on it. And I, you know, they said, we, we really need to get rid of it. You know. What, what's it going to take? I said, I, I, I'll give you 150 bucks for it. That's it. It's all I'm paying for it. 150 bucks, and I'll take it. But if not, I'm driving home empty, and I really don't care. So the lady agreed to it, and she said, whatever. I'm just happy to get it out of the driveway. Got a new car. Takes up too much room, blah, blah. So 150 bucks, start the thing up. It's got no, you know, power steering is whining away. Put it on the trailer. And, uh, I bring it back to the shop. And, uh, you know, everyone thinks, you know, everyone's excited. I'm coming back with a 94 Roadmaster Wagon, LT1. We're going to do burnouts, everything like that. No, I come back with a big disappointment. But, I, anyway, I bring it back. And, uh, you know, we mess around a little bit with it, um, put some power steering fluid in, it needs a line, line's rotted, that's leaking, it's dripping. So, um, we made a video. And um, we made a video, a little test session, trying to get the tires to spin because that there was a rare option on that one even though it had the 305 and it was a 93 they did opt for the posi rear end so it did have the tag on it and it was a posi but we tried to do posi burnouts it wouldn't do it wouldn't do a brake stand barely anything so 
wasn't great. And uh, that was the only video on, uh, on that car because um, <clears throat> the interesting thing is my currently my wife at that time she wasn't my wife 11 years ago she was just a girl that worked at Dunkin Donuts she used to come down to the shop and you know get a fix here and there on her car or you know have a beer you know hang out and stuff like that um, well she had an old uh, 89 I think it was an 89 or 88 Cadillac front-wheel drive DeVille uh, real real rat real piece of shit needed a bunch of work she needed to get out of it and uh, she needed a car well she saw that Roadmaster wagon sitting there what are you doing with that I don't know so long story short on that she ended up leaving me the Cadillac and trade after a hole was put in the fuel tank and all the gas was drained out little to my knowing but a little side note there um, so her parents are mad she gets this Roadmaster wagon they're not happy about it she's a young girl and uh, she's got a kid young young baby you know and uh, So she hops in this Roadmaster, leaves the Cadillac, and I said, you know, I said, until you get that power steering line fixed, you know, just uh, add some fluid every now and then, you'll be okay. Well, she didn't. But she bombed around in it. She had fun in it. Um, not long after she started driving it, it came back to me because... Everyone was all bent out of shape about the spare tire well in the back was rotted and there was some holes there. They were afraid the exhaust was going to come up in there and, you know, all that crap. So I had to patch that up, make it all sealed. Um, and then uh, the exhaust, she was, you know, off-roading in the thing and uh, ripped the exhaust off. Some shit happened with that. So... We put it up on the lift and we had a pile of uh, mufflers, new mufflers from uh, some shop that was going out of business and you know we just took all the junk out of it and we had this huge pile of mufflers, just random ones from you know factory ones from cars or whatever. Didn't know what they fit. So it turns into a night of drinking beers, laughing, and got this Roadmaster up there. What are we going to do for an exhaust? We got a MIG welder. We got some exhaust pipes, some mufflers. So I ended up, I think, I think I deleted the cat on it. And then I just ran a pipe like this and made sort of like a NASCAR exhaust on it, sticking right out the side with a, this little muffler, it was some little oval muffler, probably like a resonator, um, you know, for some small car or something, four cylinder. Put that on there, stuck the pipe out the side, found a 45 to come out for the rear tire, and uh, it was loud, it was, but it sounded good. And uh, that was what I could do for that night. Welded it up, and she was on her way. But um, a lot of jokes, a lot of stuff went on, you know, about that. And then um, later on, you know, before too long, the car had a few issues and uh, couldn't afford to fix it and stuff like that. And a couple shops in town really didn't want to work on it because it was old and rusty. And um, so kind of, you know, I was hoping that I would end up getting the car back, but um, kind of to my unknowing, it gets uh, sold to 
uh, some demo derby guys that come and get it, and they were going to use it in some derby that allowed wagons or something like that. So that's how the story went. The car went away and uh, moved on to the next one. But um, so 11 years later, here I am. Uh, I married her. You know, that's how things work out. Sometimes uh, things are meant to be and, you know, things happen. And uh, that's where we are. And um, we, we lived together for many years. We move up here to Maine, middle of nowhere. And uh, I end up having to go on a little road trip for a few days. And uh, my wife sends me a picture and this guy um, that I knew of in town, I talked to him before, he had a few old trucks and cars and stuff at his place and um, was always kind of, always had some junk around. I picked up some junk from him, knew who he was anyway. And uh, she sends me a picture. She said, hey, I saw this in the driveway, in, in this guy's, you know, little driveway. And it was just the nose of the wagon. Now, this car is the exact same color wood grain everything uh, interior color exact car as that 93 except this is a 92 so anyway I end up contacting the guy and I'm across the country so I contact him I say hey what, what is this car what is this Roadmaster you have in your driveway and he said oh yeah I got it it's gonna be for sale Are you interested he told me a little bit about it. He said he wanted a thousand dollars for it, or no? I said at the time, I think he said like fifteen hundred. And I said, well, it's going to be out of what I'm, what I want to pay. But he ended up for some reason. There was people in town and stuff. They were all interested in it. Contacted him about it about this station wagon. It was a big talk, and little did I know. But for some reason, he decides to hold it for me till I get back. So I get back, I get off the plane, and he's messaging me. He said, he said, hey, when you're back, come on over and look at this wagon. So I get back to town, and, you know, people are talking about this thing. And uh, so I go over, and look, I said, well... Me and the wife were driving around. We weren't even going to, I wasn't even going to bother because for that money, we just couldn't, couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't swing it. So I said, what the hell? I said, let's pull in. So we pulled in and he was out there and he went over and turned the key in this thing. And I, I couldn't believe the condition of this thing. No rust, uh, a couple of very minor dents here and there, but nothing crazy. Um... I said, well, what does it need? And he said, you know, he got it. These people drove from Pennsylvania and they parked it in the yard and that was it and it sat. So he said he cleaned out the gas tank, which I know he didn't. I th that was just made up and I don't know why. But um, he said he put some fresh gas in it and did some things to it and got it running pretty decent but it needs um, the thermostat was stuck frozen so he took that out and just left it with no thermostat and also the blower motor for the heater under the dash wasn't coming on but other than that it was all there everything the road maps and the door the little shades on the inner the you know the roof glass I mean you know, just some of the people's stuff was still in it from their road trip. And uh, he said, I'll take $1,000 for it. And I said, you know, nah. I said, I, I... But at that point, we really started to like it. And my wife obviously fell in love with this because it was unbelievable. It was like the same car, you know, 11 years ago. How does this happen? And uh, I said, you got to get this thing got to get this car so I ended up just saying screw it and I offered him 
um, 600, I think. Five or six. Five or 600 I offered them. And, I, you know, it did have the um, factory cat under it, too. So, <clears throat> he ended up breaking down and he said, you know, for you, if we can do deals in the future, he said, I'll do $700. $700, you can take the car. So, we ended up peeling it off. We hopped in the thing, Pennsylvania plates right on it, and drove it right home. I mean, it's only, you know, 10 minutes down the road, but still, the car was like, the car drives unbelievable, like new. Um, oh, that's the other thing. He said it had one, one rear brake line was leaking. So it needed the brake line done. So... Uh, I ended up bringing it in the garage. Um, it was a, it was the brake line. It was only this long. Went right from the rubber hose right to the little uh, connection on the rear end. Uh, I made the line up, put it in there all nice. Bled the brakes. Brake light stays on. Has a good brake pedal. All the brakes work. Beautiful. So I checked some other things out on it. Don't worry about the thermostat. Summertime. Don't worry about the blower motor, it's summertime. We clean it out, we end up, I, I, I power wash this thing and, it, and it's unreal, the body on it. I mean, there's not even a speck of rust on it. Now, it's got the 350 TBI, like you've seen, which was nice. Still not that, that, that uh, LT1 package that I always wanted, but same car pretty much as we had, you know, that I got, sold her 11 years ago. And uh, so we end up, uh, we got so many trucks and cars on the road, we end up uh, putting antique plates on it. You can get antique plates as long as you have another vehicle, at least one more that uh, is your everyday driver. So. You don't need inspection or anything when you get an antique, so we put antique plates on it. We tried to get antique insurance, but they rejected it. They said it wasn't mint enough. It wasn't showroom condition. But um, so we had to take pictures and everything, and we didn't get the antique insurance. But um, so we end up getting it on the road, and I mean, beautiful, beautiful driver. I mean, just runs amazing. Just tap the key every time, perfect. So she finally says, she's like, you know, you need to put the same exhaust on, like the old one, like the one, you know, back then. So I said, okay. So I got, I bought a length of uh, exhaust pipe, you know, from the parts store. And I came in and I, um, I'll see if I can put, see if I can find the pictures um, of when I did it. I don't know why I didn't make a video. I wasn't really in the mood, I guess, at that time. But I was having fun anyway. And uh, it had that factory cat, and the cat on that kind of sits up in a little, little area, you know, uh, tucked away up there, so it doesn't sit low to the ground and. Uh, I took that out and I ordered a glass pack that, uh, a Jones brand glass pack by the way, Jones full bore, and it was the same length as the cat, I mean, that I did that on purpose, and I tucked that muffler up in where the cat would go, and then I ran that new pipe back, now of course this was much better, you know, a much revamped uh, system than 11 years ago, and all new pipe, new hangers. I welded every connection right around. Nice, nice fat beads around there. And uh, the only part that I clamped was when I, I actually slid that factory cat. It was so the car is so clean underneath. I loosened the clamp, and I actually just twisted the cat right off of it. And then that little Y pipe, you know, that two inch or whatever it is, two and a quarter, two inch. That muffler just slid right on, and I clamped it there because you can't get the welder up there too good. And then the rest of it, I welded on the floor, 
and put that whole system right up. So that's what you heard on there. Custom exhaust right out the side, just like it was. And uh, there you go. I thought it was pretty, you know, pretty amazing story. Um, you know, who, how does that happen? You know, um, I mean, the cars, you don't even see the cars. People see that car driving around and they can't believe it up here. They, they just can't. They stop and they talk and they look at it and they, they can't believe that this car exists. And uh, we put, we got the, it's got the rear facing seat in the back. Um, my daughter, the dogs all hop in there and we cruise around. We didn't have too much of the season left, but we did um, enjoy it while we could and decided that we have, you know, some four-wheel drive vehicles now and uh, don't need to really drive, you know, the old antique stuff in the, in the snow and the salt. And that car is so clean, we just decided to park it and uh, that's where we're at. And as you've seen, I think that... That battery it should have been good, um, but I think I suspected that that car had some sort of a, a slight small draw on the uh, electrical system because it we one time we we didn't drive it for like uh, maybe like four or five days and the battery went dead. But I put that other battery in it out of the famous blue truck and uh, it was fine and let it sit for you know a week at a time and fire it up on a Sunday and go for a coffee ride or an ice cream ride and just drive all around and, um, but I think I I let it sit a little too long back there and it got I mean we're talking minus 20s you know some of those nights and uh, it completely just conked that battery right out so uh, I got that, brought it inside, trying to thaw it out, got it on the charger, see if I can bring it back to life, but um, I have other batteries anyway, and I'm always getting them out of junk cars. So there you go. Um, as soon as all this snow melts and it gets nice out, be making some videos on that. Um, the last time we drove it was to get the Christmas tree. We wanted to actually, you know, um, we get it from a little greenhouse place in town. We always buy our tree there. Uh, family owned, you know, small small business. And um, we did it, we slapped the tree on there just like we wanted to do. And uh, the only thing was is I was hoping it was gonna be some a little snow on the ground or something that day and I could uh, make a video and do some do some donuts with the tree on there and stuff. Thought it'd be cool, but um, it was a it was a dry, crappy day, and uh, we just got the tree. We took some pictures, and um, that was that. And it immediately got parked right after that. Um, so go back, uh, look. I'll, you know, again, I'm, I should be able to put that little box up here it shows you the video to click on but um, it'll say 92 Buick Roadmaster test session and uh, you'll see of uh, me sitting in there the thumbnail it's like the driver's side you'll see it it's like the same car same color it's like a dark blue the wood grain um, and uh, You'll see us trying to get the thing to do some shit, but it wouldn't. So, be kind of cool to check that out. Uh, be sure to uh, comment on that one and uh, tell me what you think. But hopefully, you found this interesting. And uh, I know you've been liking those uh, will it start videos, the cold starts. And uh, I specifically, you know, waited. Um, until there was enough snow and it was cold enough although during the day you know it did warm up to 13 
uh, but you know who wants to see something at night kind of nighttime video kind of sucks in my opinion but uh, you know with the, that that night it was like minus 15 and then you know hours later I'm starting the car up but um, so there you go and uh, I appreciate you watching a um, lot of a lot of comments on those videos of uh, people that have been watching my videos you know for since way back for uh, 13 years um, and some said I just found the channel and this is I love it they said I love the videos one guy said I went through and watched every video and uh, you know that makes me feel good because you know the enjoyment I get out of making them even though I had some times where I got into a slump and you know I I didn't really feel like making videos I went a long time without it but um, I have fun doing it and I have fun talking to you guys and I you know it's uh, it's it's fun to me you know in a simple life to um, you know get those notifications I look at every single comment that comes through and uh, I've uh, became friends with a few you know um, through other platforms you know Instagram Facebook uh, all that so that's what it's all about and uh, I'll continue to keep going until I can't no more so cheers to that and uh, that's about it for me for the day so let me know what you think and uh, Fire's dying down. Guy's still plowing. But, you know, just keep in mind, whenever you're out there, you know, just look around a little bit. Just keep your head up, because you never know, you know, one day. You might say, wow, he said it was going to happen, and it finally did. And that day, I'll see you on the streets. Para, 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 para